Hello, I hope you're all very well. It is a huge pleasure to welcome you to this first edition of Cantata of the Week. My name is Katy Debreceni, I am the leader of the English Baroque Soloists and I was one of the leaders of the orchestra 20 years ago. During that extraordinary endeavour, the Bach Cantata Pilgrimage, when in 2000, John Elliott Gardiner set out to perform all of Johann Sebastian Bach's church cantatas on the respective Sundays of the liturgical year that they were written for in wonderful churches all around Europe. The undertaking was in all possible ways an Everest of a project. You can imagine the preparations and the planning preceding it, not in the least the rigorous recruitment of extraordinary singers and players from many countries to swell the ranks of the Monteverdi choir and the orchestra. It wasn't humanly possible to play and sing for six out of seven days for a whole year, so in fact, John Elliott was the only person who took part in all concerts. The rest of us formed three choirs and three orchestras, and we rotated in stints of three weeks each. On a Wednesday, we would assemble in the London church and start working on two or three cantatas, depending on how many for that particular Sunday survived from Bach's three annual cantata cycles. The next two days would be dedicated to rehearsals. This was a memorable routine of discovering and getting under the skin of these extraordinary works, most of which were completely unfamiliar to all of us. It was in these days that the common style and approach started to emerge, as well as familiarity with the patterns of Bach's writing, those wonderful dancing bass lines, or the complicity needed between singers and instrumentalists in conveying the text, the singers with pronunciation and us instrumentalists with articulating with our bows and our tongues. There was also a never-ending joy in discovering more and more examples of just how many ways Bach could use to depict words in music. Then on a Friday, we would embark on a travelling to whichever wonderful European church we were headed to, each with its own different atmosphere, with its wonderful architectural features, and of course, with its different acoustical challenges. On Saturday and Sunday, we would play, each performance enhanced by the inspiring space around us, the attentive, captive and involved audience and also the knowledge that we are being recorded by the faithful sound engineers following us everywhere in the mobile recording truck just outside the church. Monday we would head home, Tuesday we rested, and then the rituals of another week with Bach would recommence on a Wednesday. The space for the cantata you're about to hear was a very special one indeed, the so-called Bach church in Arnstadt, one of the oldest towns in Thuringia. I distinctly remember entering the church and being instantly uplifted by the airiness of this whitewashed space with those wonderful galleries running all around us and, last but not least, the magnificent Wendel organ that Bach inspected and played himself just above us. I remember John Elliott talking about the young, confident 18-year-old Bach taking up his position as Kapellmeister in Einstadt immediately gets into trouble with the town authorities and the very conservative congregation. First, for providing strange harmonies and for taking far too long to improvise between lines of the song choral. Then, by entering into a brawl with the young student who refuses flatly to play the difficult part that Bach writes for him in one of his cantatas. And then again, for inviting a strange maiden into the organ loft and worse, asking her to sing from there. A wonderful statue just outside the church shows that cocky young Bach, so sure of his own musical prowess. Now to the cantata. It hails from the first cantata cycle, 1723 to 24, written for the Quasimodo Geniti Sunday, this Sunday of the year, the first after Easter, also known as Thomas Sunday or low Sunday, maybe an allusion to getting back to the normality of Sundays after the high of Easter Sunday. The scene of the, of the sermon 
depicted in the Gospel of St. John's is quite a dramatic one. Imagine the disciples huddled together, Thomas, the apostle, doubting Thomas, having already made it clear that he is not prepared to believe in the resurrection of Christ unless he sees Christ with his own eyes. And then, in that moment, Jesus appears and greets the disciples with the words, Peace be unto you. The very same greeting still used today in Israel, my home country, and in all Middle Eastern countries around it. The message is one of keeping faith in the face of adversity, of hoping against all hope. Listen to the long, very long opening note of the corno di tirarsi, which is a small brass instrument resembling both a curled up horn and a trumpet. And this long note at the very beginning of the cantata literally exhorts us, even today, to hold on to our faith, whether religious or of another type. Or maybe just hold on to hope. And in the penultimate movement, listen to how Bach juxtaposes the nervous, frightened conversation of the disciples depicted in the scurrying violin lines, with a sudden shift to a serene, slow, lilting triple time section of the bass singer, Jesus, singing, Friede sei mit dir. Peace be with you. I hope this music helps us all find a little strength and some inner peace. Be safe and keep well.